Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And uh, I know most of you guys have actually requested me to talk about Martha Karwa's call for Mandamano. And uh, finally, we have already talked the co about the cost of living. It's just to remind us, sovereignty belongs to the people. Ata kama tutasafirishwa mbinguni through killings during demonstrations. Yes. As NAC Kenya and as people of Kenya, yes. we are saying, should the talks fail as they are looking, they are failing. Yes. We shall not forgo our rights. We shall go back yes. to the streets if necessary. Yes. We are going to exercise our civil, political, and human rights to the fullest. Yes. We are saying... We are saying no to intimidation and we are calling upon Kenyans to join and hold hands so that we restore sanity in our nation. Raila Odinga also spoke about it today. I want to make a promise to you guys that either later today or tomorrow morning that video will be out. And uh, today I also saw Raila Odinga convening ODM parliamentary group meeting. Yesterday, I saw Martha Karwa with NAC Kenya members after their meeting. The other day, I saw Kalozo Musyoka meeting with WIPA leaders. I can conclude that Azimio are finally listening to whatever we are trying to say here. Because for those who have been listening to us, some two months ago, I offered my unsolicited advice to Azimio Lomoja One Kenya Alliance on a few things they needed to do if they were keen on winning the presidency in 2027. And one of the advices I gave them was that they needed to identify their presidential candidate early enough. I want to assume that they're already thinking towards that line. And the other advice I offered to them was that they needed to strengthen their individual parties because a strong ODM party is good for Azimio. A strong wiper party is good for Azimio. And a strong NAC Kenya, DAP Kenya, Roots Party are good for Azimio. So I want to assume that all these moves we are seeing are part of the strategy of strengthening the individual parties. In conclusion, we remain part of the Azimio coalition. But even with the larger clan with, of Azimio, their houses. This is the house of NAC Kenya. Yes. So NAC Kenya has to prepare to strengthen itself, to be ready for the next general elections, let there be as many candidates within as a means. But I don't want to talk about that in this video. But in this video, I want to talk about Kimani Ishungwa's response to Raila Odinga's dossier on uh, oil, which Raila Odinga released yesterday. And that response by Kimani Ishungwa has actually backfired on him. For those who followed uh, Raila Odinga's dossier yesterday, it was clear that it was well researched and it was very specific and it sought specific answers. Then from nowhere, Kimani Shungwa came out and issued or read a statement flanked by some Kenya Kwanzaa leaders. And immediately he read that statement and posted on his Facebook page, Kimani Ishungwa was roasted badly. First of all, before we get into those comments, I want you guys to listen to Kimani Ishungwa and tell me if the statement he's reading there is related to what Rodinga talked about earlier. In view of what you have seen from the weekend, Kenyans will remember the weekend, the statements delivered by senior members of the Azimio coalition, culminating to the statements made by Mr. Odinga himself and another group of Azimio leaders yesterday somewhere in Westlands. And the so-called dozier, which we are saying is nothing but political hogwash, is a well-choreographed campaign to try and incite Kenyans against the current administration, to try and incite Kenyans around the question of the cost of living. Because, and you know where I sit with our colleagues in Azimio, in the National Dialogue Committee, and you know that is a matter that has been on the table. And they probably think they can now use the masses to arm twist 
the Kenya Kwanza government to reintroduce fuel and food subsidies that were fueling and driving corruption that was benefiting those who were in power then. And because some of them had planned and knew the plans they had to perpetuate that culture of subsidies, especially around fuel, they imagine that they can use either the dialogue process or the hogwash that we have seen being billed as dozias to blackmail government to institute or to carry on with the state capture charade of subsidizing fuel. Kenyans were said to have gone to the streets, as they have already said, on the basis of the cost of living. But we also know it's not true. They mobilized their supporters to go to the streets on account of what they billed was a stolen election. When that did not sell, they billed it as a fight for the cost of living. And you remember what they called the Sufuria movement, putting Sufurias on their heads, apparently because of Funga prices. The desperation you see with Mr. Odinga today and his ilk is because they can see and they can attest when they walk into supermarkets the price of Funga has gone down from a high of 230 shillings per 2 kg uh, bag to a low of 145 some brands as well as 135. Part of the most expensive brands in the country now are going at 157 to 162 from 240 shillings only six months ago. We understand Mr. Odinga's desperation, but we want to ask him to be honorable enough and to be honest enough with his supporters and with Kenyans. Asanteni. <laughs> That's Kimani Ishungwa. In this video, I want to reveal to you guys why Kenyans are mad with Kimani Ishungwa's response to Raila Amolo Odinga. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is ladies and gentlemen let us dive in let me begin by just going through some of the comments let's let's begin by going through some of the comments on uh, kimani ishungwa's facebook page let me just go to kimani ishungwa's facebook page eh? that's kimani ishungwa yeah this is the verified page you can see there so let's just scroll to the the posts so this is not it okay it's this one here now where he attached the statement plus the one he read if you look at at this post alone several things are just not normal there is no way kimani ishungwa the majority leader in the national assembly can make a post like this but only attract 57 likes on it can only attract 22 shares, which means some of his people, and only 71 comments. It means Kenyans really don't give a hoot about Kimani Ishungwa. And if I were Kimani Ishungwa, that's the first thing that should worry me. Now, let me open the comments. Now, if you open the comments, the first comment which is coming for, to me there is by Philemon Kiprop. Philemon Kiprop is telling Kimani Ishungwa, revolution is coming for this illegitimate government. Then there is someone called Sami Githoba. Sami Githoba is telling uh, Kimani Shungwa that I voted this government, but trust me, if Raila calls for Mandamano today, we are calling this government to shame. Then someone called Oscar, Victor Oscar Makokelo, counter Raila's allegation with evidence, not PR, gimmicks, and empty talks. Someone Pius Pius is saying, so in G2G deal, that is supposed to be a win-win situation. Our good government had no say on which local farm could be used. So basically it means most Kenyans believe that Red Odinga statement just deserved a well-researched or a well-convincing response from Kenya Kwanza government. Someone says suspects are shooting, are shouting at the top of their voices. Accept that you have failed as a government. That is Kipro Arab Chirumo. So if you look at these comments, Almost 99% of them are like attacking Kimani Shungwa. Like, I like the way you people 
face camera knowing very well that you are lying so it means from here alone if you read if you continue reading this you can defend anything here boss thieves have been cornered what is this government doing to confirm you know jss teachers odinga is a truthful man you can't defend lies Riley is right on this so which means generally kenyans were attacking kimani shungwa and kenya kwanza government over their response and of course even if you went to to Denis Itumbi's post the response was also just the same Itumbi was also being roasted because you know Ken Raila Odinga issued a statement then Denis Itumbi goes ahead and is is pulling some uh, company details of Raila Odinga who doesn't know that Raila Odinga deals in business in oil business which means when it comes to oil then Kenyans should be able to listen to Raila Odinga because he's a player there and whatever he's telling them could be true. But why do you think Kenyans were roasting Kimani Shungwa the way they did? Number one, in my view, I'm 100% convinced that Kenyans were mad with Kimani Shungwa because his statement did not really address the real issues which were raised by Red Odinga. Red Odinga raised several issues. For example, he talked of three cartels. Four cartels, sorry. The men and the women who came up with this self-serving deal must be surcharged and sacked. So Kimani Shungwa's statement would have told the Kenyans that, okay, Raila Odinga spoke of four cartels. Now these are those four cartels Raila Odinga is talking about. Are they cartels or these are just honest businessmen? Raila Odinga talked about Uganda now shifting their base from Kenya to other neighboring countries. He ought to have addressed those specific issues Raila Odinga raised. So that's why Kenyans are actually mad with them. Number two, if you read the, those statements, it means Kenyans were also mad with Kimani Ishungwa because Ray Ludinga's statement was more professional in a way, and therefore Kenyans believed that it, it deserved a, a proper response, not excuses which Kimani Ishungwa was subjecting Kenyans to. For example, if Ray Ludinga talked of um, G2G, and he, he claimed that no agreement was entered into. And that's why, personally, I think the statement which I've read part of it by the, 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 the CS, Davis Jirir, is a bit well thought out. And that's what Kenyans expected of someone like Kimani Ishumbo. Just respond to Raila Odinga in a professional way. He made a statement professionally, raised the issues, just respond to those issues one by one. Number three, why Kenyans were mad with Kimani Ishungwa is because Kimani Ishungwa is the majority leader in the National Assembly. It's not part of the executive. So why would Kimani Ishungwa become the first person to respond on a matter that deserves a response, not even from the executive, but from specific line ministry, which is the Ministry of Energy. Today, again, I had Rai Ludinga talk about the EPRA CEO why he was also part of the team that was negotiating. You know, and whatever Raila Odinga is trying to say makes sense. Because if you are the one who is going to set the prices, then why do you go and be part of the negotiations? Let the oil companies deal there. When they come, it's for, for you, you'll just, I mean, you'll just discuss or you'll just come up with the methods of arriving at the right price. And Raila Odinga, is raising some of these issues which are very key but Kimani Shungwa is coming you know but he's not part of the executive he's supposed to be the the legislature he's supposed to to actually oversight so if i were Kimani Shungwa Kenyans expected Kimani Shungwa to take Raila Odinga's statement go through the back door or back because he's part of the Kenya Kwanza government go through the back door get answers from those uh, from the land ministry then he can now come to parliament and respond to some of these issues or he can then now because it's politics he can then come and call for a press conference but not just calling for a press conference to respond on matters that really is supposed to be oversighting and lastly from what i've read there kenyans are tired kenyans are just tired with the kenya kwanza government in fact if you gave kenyans opportunity today their prayer is that these people should not be seen anywhere near tv i don't know what you think that's my take. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.